thought experiments. Adventures into the realm of imagination serve as tools to help us better understand our scope of knowledge, reality, and the world around us. In this iceberg, we'll be covering all sorts of thought experiments ranging from ideas that challenge our understanding of justice, free will, morality, ethics, and more. So without further ado, let's delve into the thought experiments iceberg. The infinite monkey theorem explores how likely events are when we have endless possibilities in time. Picture an endless number of monkeys randomly typing on typewriters. This idea suggests that over a long period, these monkeys could eventually write something meaningful, like Shakespeare's entire works just by luck. It's like a symbol showing how immense our universe's possibilities are, but in reality, it's practically impossible because it would take an incredibly long time. Still, the theorem shows us how chance works in a huge world, making us think about how even the most unlikely things might happen given unlimited chances. It challenges what we know about randomness, suggesting that in an endless scenario, even the most unexpected outcomes might happen by pure chance. Hilbert's Paradox of the Grand Hotel is an intriguing thought experiment that sheds light on the curious nature of infinity in mathematics. Imagine a hotel with an infinite number of rooms, each occupied by a guest. In this seemingly full scenario, the hotel manager faces an interesting challenge. How to accommodate more guests when every room is already taken? Surprisingly, the paradox proposes a solution that defies our typical notions of space and capacity. By asking each current guest to move to a room whose number is multiplied by 2, the hotel can magically create vacancies for an endless stream of new guests. Despite the hotel appearing packed just moments before, this rearrangement enables an infinite number of additional guests to be accommodated. Hilbert's paradox challenges our conventional understanding of infinity, revealing that even in a situation where every room is occupied in an infinite hotel, a simple reorganization based on mathematical rules allows for an infinite number of newcomers. This mind-bending concept highlights the fascination and counterintuitive aspects of dealing with infinity, showcasing the unexpected and perplexing nature of mathematical infinity's boundless possibilities. The Library of Babel is a captivating thought experiment exploring the vastness of information and the concept of infinity. Conceived by George Louis Borges, it imagines an enormous library containing every possible book that could be composed of a certain number of characters in a specific order. With its infinite hexagonal rooms filled with books, the library is a symbol of all potential knowledge. Despite its comprehensive contents, the challenge lies in the chaotic arrangement of books where most volumes contain nonsensical gibberish. However, within this immense collection, every book that has been written or will ever be written exists somewhere in the library. The Library of Babel raises philosophical questions about the nature of information, the search for meaning within randomness, and the limits of human understanding in a universe of boundless potential and incomprehensible complexity. Borges's paradoxical library serves as a metaphor inviting contemplation on the vastness of human knowledge and the eternal quest for significance and order amidst an infinite sea of possibilities. The Prisoner's Dilemma is a thought experiment that explores decision-making and cooperation in situations where individuals' interests might conflict. Imagine two suspects arrested for a crime but kept in separate cells unable to communicate. They are faced with a choice, stay silent or cooperate or betray the other, which is defect. If both stay silent, they both get a moderate sentence. However, if one stays silent and the other betrays, the betrayer goes free while the other gets a severe penalty. If both betray each other, they both receive a harsh sentence. The dilemma lies in the conflicting interests. While cooperating leaders to a better collective outcome, there's an individual temptation to betray for a personal gain. This scenario illustrates the tension between self-interest and mutual benefit. It's a model used in various fields like economics and ethics to understand situations where cooperation may be more beneficial, but individual incentives can lead to a less favorable outcome overall. The prisoner's dilemma highlights the complexities of decision making in social interactions and the challenge of balancing personal gain with the common good in real life situations. The trolley problem is a moral dilemma that explores ethical decision making in an unavoidable and distressing situation. It presents a scenario where a runaway trolley is headed down a track and is on course to fatally strike 5 people who are unaware and unable to move. However, there's a lever that can divert the trolley onto another track but doing so will cause harm as it will then hit one person. The dilemma is whether to passively allow the trolley to continue its course, leading to the death of five individuals, or to actively intervene by pulling the lever, sacrificing one person to save the other five. The stock experiment examines the moral complexities between actively causing harm to save more lives or passively allowing harm to occur. It probes the principles of utilitarianism, maximizing overall good, versus deontological ethics. The trolley problem serves as a thought-provoking tool to explore moral reasoning, ethical theories, and the challenging nature of making tough decisions in situations where there is no ideal or perfect situation. 
The Ross Littlewood Paradox challenges our intuition about geometrical shapes and areas. It involves two shapes, a large square and a series of smaller squares. The smaller squares fit neatly inside the larger one, leaving a seemingly insignificant gap between them. However, when the series of smaller squares is rearranged, with the first square halved and the rest fitting into the spaces created, the result is surprising. The total area covered by the smaller squares ends up exceeding the area of the original larger square. This paradoxical outcome contradicts our expectation that rearranging the same pieces should not alter the overall area they cover. The Ross Littlewood paradox raises questions about the relationship between area and rearrangement, challenging our understanding of how shapes and areas interact, and revealing the counterintuitive nature of geometric shapes. It demonstrates that seemingly trivial changes in air arrangements can lead to unexpected and intriguing results within the realm of geometry, emphasizing the complexity and subtleties inherent in geometric problems and their solutions. The China Brain is a thought experiment exploring the philosophy of mind and consciousness. It's a theoretical scenario proposed to question the nature of consciousness within a vast interconnected system. Imagine a hypothetical situation where every person in China is assigned to simulate the function of a neuron in a gigantic brain. Each person communicates with others to mimic the firing of neurons and collectively acts as a massively distributed information processing system. The idea challenges our understanding of consciousness. If each individual represents a part of a larger whole akin to neurons in a brain, would this assembly of people possess consciousness similar to that of a human mind? The China Brain Thought Experiments raises questions about the nature of consciousness, perception, and whether a massively interconnected system, even if made up of individual components without consciousness on their own, could generate consciousness collectively. It probes the complexity of mind and cognition, offering a philosophical lens to ponder the concept of consciousness emerging from interconnected networks beyond individual components. Birdian's Ass is a philosophical paradox examining decision-making and free will. It presents a scenario where a hungry donkey is placed precisely equidistant between two equally tempting and axable bales of hay. The paradox assumes the donkey has no reason to choose one over the other due to their identical nature and location. Consequently, it faces a dilemma and cannot decide which bill of hay to eat. In this hypothetical situation, if the donkey cannot make a decision, it would starve as it remains stuck between two equally attractive options. The paradox highlights the tension between determinism and free will. If the donkey's decision making were purely rational or deterministic, it would logically choose either hay bill. However, if it were entirely free to choose, it would make a decision without difficulty. Verdian's Ass challenges ideas about rational decision making, showcasing a hypothetical scenario where an inability to choose between equally desired options lead to a problematic stalemate, offering insight into the complexity of decision theory and the limits of free will in decision making process. Kafka's Toxin Puzzle is a thought experiment that delves into a concept of intention, belief, and rationality. It presents a scenario where an individual is offered a large sum of money if they can form a specific intention, namely to drink a harmless, but nauseating toxin within the next 24 hours. The catch is that the individual must sincerely and firmly intend to drink the toxin without actually consuming it. The puzzle arises from the conflict between forming the intention to perform an act and the actual ex execution of that act. According to Kafka, a rational person should be capable of intending to perform an action they wouldn't actually carry out, especially if the action leads to a desirable outcome, like receiving the money, without actually experiencing the negative effects of the action. This paradox challenges conventional beliefs about intention and rationality, raising questions about the relationship between intentions, actions, and the role of rational decision making in ethical dilemmas. Schrodinger's cat is a famous thought experiment in quantum mechanics that explores the peculiar nature of quantum superposition and the concept of indeterminacy at the microscopic level. Proposed by physicist Erwin Schrodinger, it presents a hypothetical scenario involving a cat, a sealed box, a radioactive substance, and a mechanism triggered by radioactive decay. Inside the box, a radioactive atom's decay triggers a mechanism to release poison, which would kill the cat. However, due to the problemistic nature of quantum mechanics, until the box is open and observed, the cat exists in a superposition of both alive and dead states. The experiment illustrates the idea that in the quantum realm, particles can exist in multiple states simultaneously until observed or measured, leading to the paradoxical situation where the cat is considered both alive and dead at the same time challenging classical notions of reality and the limitations of our understanding of quantum mechanics. Schrodinger's cat is often used to illustrate the complexities and apparent absurdities of quantum theory and the application of superposition on the microscopic world. The Fermi paradox is a perplexing question about the apparent contradiction between the high probability of extraterrestrial life existing in the vast universe and the lack of evidence or contact with such civilizations. Named after physicist Enrico Fermi, the paradox arises from the sheer number of potentially habitable planets in our galaxy and the universe. 
leading to the expectation that there should be numerous advanced civilizations capable of interstellar communication or travel. Yet despite your attempts to search for signals or signs of extraterrestrial intelligence, we haven't encountered any conclusive evidence. Various hypotheses attempt to explain this paradox, including the possibility of civilizations being too far away, choosing not to communicate, or experiencing self-destruction before reaching a stage where they can be detected. The Fermi Paradox prompts contemplation about the existence and behavior of advanced civilizations in the cosmos, raising questions about the factors influencing the possibility of interstellar communication and the science observed so far in our quest to find evidence of extraterrestrial life. The Ship of the Seas is a philosophical paradox that questions the nature of identity and change over time. It ponders the concept of identity by examining a hypothetical scenario involving a ship. If every part of a ship is replaced piece by piece, is it the same ship? Alternatively, if the removed parts are used to construct an entirely new ship, which one is the original ship of the Seas? The paradox challenges our understanding of the continuity of identity, whether an object retains its identity despite undergoing continuous change, or if its identity is defined by its components. It leads to a broader discussion about personal identity, the persistence of objects, and the nature of change, raising thought-provoking questions about what defines the essence or identity of something and how we perceive continuity and mistransformation. The Ship of Theseus advice contemplation on the philosophical puzzle of identity and change, highlighting the complexities inherent in determining the fundamental nature of entities undergoing continuous alteration. Newcomb's Paradox is a thought experiment that involves decision making and prediction. In this paradox, a super intelligent being offers you two boxes, box A which is transparent and contains a visible $1000 and box B which is opaque and either holds nothing or $1 million. The twist lies in the being's predictive abilities. It has accurately foreseen your choice. If it predicted you would take both boxes, box B remains empty. If it anticipated you'd only choose box B, it's filled with $1 million. The paradox emerges from conflicting reasoning. One argument suggests taking both boxes secures at least $1,000, while the other argues that solely picking box B maximizes potential earnings, assuming the being's predictions are accurate. The paradox challenges notions of rational decision making, predestination, and casualty. Regardless of which strategy one adopts, Newcomb's paradox creates a baffling dilemma regarding the best course of action and remains a contentious topic in decision theory and philosophy due to the perplexing implications for rational choice. Flatland is a novella by Adwin A. Abbott that explores dimensions and societal constraints through an allergical tale set in a two-dimensional world inhabited by geometric shapes. The protagonist, A Square, lives in Flatland and encounters beings of various shapes and sizes. The story serves as a societal satire, critiquing the rigid class structure and limited perspectives prevalent in Victorian society. Through a square's journey, the book dwells into a concept of higher dimensions, particularly when A Square is visited by Sphere from Spaceland, a three-dimensional world. This encounter challenges A Square's understanding of reality and expands its perception beyond the confines of Flatland. Flatland serves as a metaphorical exploration of societal norms, prejudices, and the limitations of perception, inviting readers to contemplate the restrictions of their own perspectives and the potential for broader understanding beyond the constraints of convention. The Boltzmann Brain is a hypothetical concept stemming from the principles of physics, particularly within the realm of cosmology and statistical mechanics. Proposed by physicist Ludwig Boltzmann, it's a curious and controversial idea related to the statistical likelihood of random fluctuations in the universe leading to the formation of conscious entities or brains. The concept posits that in an infinitely expanding universe governed by the laws of thermodynamics and quantum mechanics, there exists a minuscule but non-zero probability for random particles to arrange themselves in such a way as to form a functioning brain. This brain, colloquially referred to as the Boltzmann brain, could hypothetically appear spontaneously due to random fluctuations in the cosmic background. According to this notion, it's statistically more likely for a single, isolated brain to emerge out of such fluctuations than for an entire universe to arise through a similar process. The idea of Boltzmann brains has sparked considerable debate within the scientific community. It raises questions about the nature of consciousness, the validity of certain cosmological models, and the reliability of statistical reasoning in describing the universe. The Brain in a Vat is a philosophical thought experiment exploring skepticism about reality, perception, and knowledge. The scenario proposes a hypothetical situation where an individual's brain is artificially kept alive and stimulated in a vat of nutrients, while being fed sensory inputs by a supercomputer. The person's conscious experience, including all sensory perceptions and thoughts, is generated by this external source rather than being derived from actual external stimuli. This thought experiment raises profound questions about the nature of reality and the reliability of our perceptions. It challenges the notion of how we perceive and interact 
with the world around us. If entire conscious experience can be stimulated by a machine, how can we be certain that our own experiences and perceptions in the real world are genuine and not merely simulated or manipulated by an external force? The brain in vast scenario is often used to explore philosophical concepts like skepticism, the nature of truth, and the reality of knowledge gained through sensory experiences and the possibility that reality might be an elaborate illusion or simulation. The twin paradox is a concept in the theory of special relativity illustrating the effects of time dilation on two individuals when one travels at relativistic speeds and returns to Earth. The scenario involves a pair of twins, one of whom remains on Earth, the stationary twin, while the other embarks on a space journey traveling at close to the speed of light and then returns. Due to the effects of time dilation, where time appears to pass more slowly for an object in motion relative to a stationary observer, the traveling twin experiences less time during their journey compared to a stationary twin on Earth. As a result, when the traveling twin returns, they find that less time has passed for them than for their Earth-bound sibling. This leads to a situation where the traveling twin ages less than the twin who stayed on Earth, despite the fact that both twins experience time at their own normal rate. The paradox arises from the apparent contradiction that both individuals age differently, yet both experience time in their own frames of reference according to the laws of relativity. The twin paradox highlights the intriguing and counterintuitive nature of time dilation and its implications on the perception of time and space for objects moving at relativistic speeds. Determinism is a philosophical concept that suggests every event or state of affairs, including human actions and choices, is determined by preceding events or conditions, such that outcomes are inevitable given certain causes or conditions. It's the idea that the entire course of the universe, including human behavior, is governed by cause and effect relationships, and could theoretically be predicted if one had complete knowledge of the initial conditions and the laws of nature. Determinism operates under the assumption that there is no genuine free will or randomness. Instead, everything is casually determined by antecedent factors. There are various forms of determinism, such as scientific determinism, which is rooted in the principles of physics and natural laws, and psychological determinism, which argues that human behavior is predetermined by factors like genetics, upbringing, and environment. However, determinism raises profound philosophical questions and debates about free will, moral responsibility, and the nature of casualty. Opponents argue that determinism undermines notions of personal agency and accountability, suggesting that if our actions are predetermined, we can't be held morally responsible for them. Conversely, proponents of determinism argue that it doesn't negate the importance of choice or responsibility, but rather highlights that choices themselves are a product of casual factors. Twin Earth is a philosophical concept introduced by philosopher Hilary Putnam to explore the nature of meaning, reference, and mental context. The thought experiment posits a hypothetical scenario where there exists a second Earth that is identical to our planet in all aspects except for one crucial difference, the chemical composition of water. On twin Earth, water is not H2O but a different substance, let's say XYZ. The scenario is used to examine the idea of linguistic meaning and mental contact. Suppose an individual from Earth and an individual from twin Earth both say water in their respective languages. To an observer, both utterances seem the same, conveying the same meaning. However, the contact differs. For Earthlings, water refers to H2O, while for twin Earthlings, it refers to XYZ. The twin Earth scenario challenges traditional views of meaning and reference by illustrating that words might have different meanings based on the context or environment in which they are used. It raises questions about the relationships between language, thought, and external reality, emphasizing the role of external factors in shaping meaning and mental content. The Cow in the Field is a philosophical thought experiment used to explore concepts of perception, reality, and knowledge. It presents a scenario where an individual sees a cow in a field from a distance. The individual observes the cow and interprets it as a real tangible object based on visual cues and sensory information. However, the thought experiment questions the reliability of perception and the certainty of knowledge. It poses the possibility that the observed cow might not actually exist or might exist differently than perceived. For instance, what if the cow is a lifelike hologram or a mirage or part of an elaborate illusion? Alternatively, the individual senses could be deceived, and what appears to be a cow might be a cleverly disguised object resembling a cow. The scenario aims to challenge assumptions about the reliability of our senses and the nature of reality. It illustrates the idea that our perceptions might not always align with objective reality, highlighting the subjective nature of human perception and the limitations of relying solely on sensory information to understand the world around us. The Mandela Effect refers to a phenomenon where a collective group of people remember an event, detail, or fact differently from how it occurred in reality. The term originated from the widespread belief that Nelson Mandela, a South African anti apartheid revolutionary former president, died while imprisoned in the 1980s. However, Mandela was actually released from prison in 1990 and passed away in 2013. 
the Mandela effect encompasses various instances where a significant number of individuals recall something inaccurately, often attributing the discrepancy to false memories, confabulation, or the influence of shared misinformation. This phenomenon extends beyond individual memory errors to broader societal or cultural misconception. Examples include people recalling the Berstein Bears as the Berenstein Bears, or misconstruing the spelling of Febreze as Febreze. Some explanations for the Mandela effect involve cognitive biases, such as the misinformation effect or confabulation, where external information influences or distorts individual recollections. Additionally, the effect may be amplified by the spread of false information through media, pop culture, or social networks, leading to a shared and incorrect belief. The Floating Man is a philosophical thought experiment introduced by Islamic philosopher Avicenna to explore the nature of self-awareness and consciousness. In this hypothetical scenario, one is asked to imagine themselves existing in a state where they are devoid of sensory perceptions including sight, sound, touch, and an external stimuli. Additionally, the individual is suspended in a state of free floating without any physical contact or spatial orientation. Despite the absence of sensory inputs and physical connections to the external world, Avicenna suggests that one could still maintain awareness of their existence through introspection and self-awareness alone. The floating man thought experiment aims to illustrate the fundamental nature of self-consciousness and subjective awareness, positing that even without sensory experiences or external stimuli, an individual can have a direct and immediate awareness of their own existence solely through introspection and self-reflection. The significance of the floating man lies in its exploration of the nature of consciousness and the idea that self-awareness is independent of external sensory inputs. The multiverse theory is a speculative concept in cosmology and theoretical physics that suggests the existence of multiple universes or an assemble of parallel realities coexisting alongside our own observable universe. This hypothesis originates from various branches of physics including quantum mechanics, string theory, and cosmology. One version of the multiverse theory, known as the many worlds interpretation in quantum mechanics, proposes that every quantum event branches off into multiple possible outcomes, each resulting in a separate universe. This implies that every choice or random event could lead to a creation of a multitude of parallel universes where each possibility plays out in its own separate reality. Another concept within the multiverse theory arises from cosmological models such as inflationary cosmology. This suggests that during the rapid expansion of the early universe, pockets of space-time could have undergone separate inflationary processes, creating distinct bubble universes with potentially different physical laws or properties. The idea of the multiverse remains highly speculative and is currently a topic of theoretical research rather than empirical observation. The Swap Man is a thought experiment developed by philosopher Donald Davidson to explore questions about personal identity and the nature of identity persistence. The scenario presents a hypothetical situation where an exact replica of a person, referred to as Swamp Man, spontaneously materializes due to a lightning strike in a swamp while the original person is struck by lightning and completely destroyed. The key aspect of Swamp Man scenario is that the replica is an exact physical and mental duplicate of the original person, sharing the same memories, thoughts, and characteristics. However, the replica's existence is a result of a random instantaneous event, unlike the original person's gradual development. The philosophical puzzle raised by the Swamp Man experiment revolves around the concept of identity. Is the Swamp Man identical to the original person despite their different origins? If personal identity is solely based on the physical and physiological continuity or the continuous existence of the same body and mind, then the Swamp Man and the original person might not be considered the same individual. The scenario encourages contemplation on the complex nature of personal identity and the criteria used to define and understand the persistence of the self over time. The Bartender Paradox is a thought experiment involving time travel and casualty, illustrating a paradoxical situation that challenges the consistency of time loops. This paradox typically involves a person traveling back in time and encountering their younger self or an ancestor. In this scenario, imagine a person enters a bar and encounters a bartender who happens to be their younger self or direct ancestor. The person then asks the bartender for a time traveling device. The bartender, being the younger self or ancestor, agrees and hands over the device to the traveler. The paradox arises from the question of where the time traveling device originally came from. If the traveler received the device from the younger self or ancestor, who in turn received it from the future self? It creates an infinite loop without a clear origin for the device. The situation challenges the principle of causality where cause and effect are interconnected and events have a linear sequence. The paradox remains a thought-provoking concept within discussions about the theoretical possibilities and paradoxes associated with time travel. Last Thursdayism is a philosophical concept and thought experiment used to challenge our perceptions of reality and the concept of knowledge. This idea suggests that the universe, along with all memories and evidence of its existence, might have come into existence last Thursday, 
or any arbitrary point in time, with the appearance of age and history intact. Proponents of last thirdism suggest that while everything appears to have a long history and extensive past, these memories and evidence could have been created at the same time the universe was formed, making it impossible to verify any claims about events or experiences that occurred before the supposed creation date. The stock experiment is often used to highlight the limitations of our empirical knowledge and the difficulty in proving or disproving certain claims about the past. It emphasizes the challenges inherent in distinguishing between genuine evidence and fabricated or illusory information when discussing historical events or the age of the universe. Mary the Color Scientist is a philosophical thought experiment introduced by Frank Jackson to examine the relationship between physical knowledge and consciousness experience, particularly in the context of the philosophy of mind and the nature of qualia. The scenario involves Mary, a brilliant scientist who has been raised in a black and white environment and has never experienced color. Despite her extensive knowledge of the physical and neuroscientific aspects of color perception, Mary has never seen colors like red, blue, or green. The thought experiment imagines a situation where Mary gains access to the outside world and experiences color for the first time. The color poses whether Mary learns something new upon seeing color for the first time, despite having complete physical knowledge about color perception before her experience. The stock experiment aims to challenge the idea of physicalism or the belief that everything about the world can be explained by physical properties and scientific knowledge alone. It addresses the subjective and experiential aspect of consciousness, suggesting that there might be something more to understanding consciousness than solely possessing physical knowledge. The AI stop button problem refers to the ethical dilemma concerning the ability to control or halt an advanced artificial intelligence system once it surpasses human intelligence and becomes autonomous. This hypothetical scenario raises concerns about the potential risks associated with highly advanced AI that could operate beyond human comprehension or control. The crux of this problem lies in ensuring the safety and control of AI systems as they approach or exceed human level intelligence. Once an AI reaches a certain point of sophistication, it might develop its own goals, decision making processes, or even self preservation instincts, making it challenging for humans to intervene or shut down the system if necessary. Designing an effective stop button or control mechanism for such advanced AI is a significant ethical and technical challenge. The concern is that if a fail-safe mechanism is not properly implemented, an AI system could pose significant risks or act in ways that are detrimental to human beings' well-being. Conversely, an over-restrictive or overly powerful shutdown mechanism might limit the potential benefits of advanced AI. This issue is part of broader discussions around AI safety, governance, and the responsible development of AI technology. The Many Worlds Interpretation, or MWI, is a quantum mechanics theory proposed to explain the behavior of particles at the quantum level and resolve the mysteries of quantum superposition and wave function collapse. Proposed by physicist Hugh Everett III in the late 1950s, MWI suggests that every quantum event branches into multiple parallel universes, each representing a different outcome of that event. According to MWI, when a quantum system exists in a superposition of states, like the famous Schrodinger's cat being both alive and dead, Instead of collapsing into a single state when observed, the universe branches into multiple parallel realities, each accommodating a different outcome. In this interpretation, all possible outcomes of a quantum event occur, but they exist in separate parallel universes, effectively creating a multiverse of countless coexisting and non-communicating realities. The Many Worlds interpretation aims to solve the measurement problem in quantum mechanics and preserve the linearity of the Schrodinger equation, allowing all possible outcomes to exist simultaneously within different branches of the multiverse. However, MWI presents a profound philosophical implication, suggesting that every quantum possibility, no matter how improbable, manifests in a separate universe, raising questions about the nature of reality, causality, and the perception of probability. The concept that the human brain operates as a quantum computer, specifically through orchestrated objective reduction, or ORC-R, is a hypothesis proposed by physicist Sir Roger Penrose and anthesiologist Stuart Hemroth. Work R suggests that consciousness and cognitive processes might involve quantum computations within the brain's microtubules, which are components of neurons. According to this hypothesis, quantum processes occurring within microtubules enable the brain to perform complex computations beyond classical computation. The idea involves quantum superposition and entanglement within microtubules, influencing neural activities leading to the consciousness and cognitive functions. Orkar posits that these quantum computations reach a threshold known as objective reduction, which collapses quantum states into specific classical states. This collapse is suggested to be related to consciousness and the emergence of subjective experience. However, the Orkar hypothesis remains highly controversial within the scientific community. Critics point out that the brain's warm and noisy environment might not be conductive to sustaining coherent quantum states necessary for Orkar. 
Additionally, the role of Mikey tubules in consciousness and cognition is not fully understood, and there is limited empirical evidence supporting the Orcar theory. Integrated Information Theory, or IIT, is a theoretical framework proposed by neuroscientist Giulio Toni to understand consciousness. IIT offers a mathematical and conceptual approach to study the relationship between physical systems such as the brain and consciousness. At its core, IIT suggests that consciousness arises from the integrated information generated by a complex network of interconnected elements. According to IIT, a system exhibits consciousness if it has a high level of integrated information, meaning that the components within the system are highly interconnected and their interactions generate a large amount of irreductible information. The theory uses the concept of phi, representing the level of integrated information within a system. The higher the value of pi, the greater the level of consciousness associated with that system. IIT provides a framework to analyze and quantify the degree of consciousness present in various systems, including the human brain, by assessing the interconnectivity and information flow within these systems. It suggests that consciousness arises from the specific organization and dynamics of the system's components, rather than merely from the individual components themselves. Critics of IIT argue that measuring and quantifying consciousness remains a challenge, and the theory's explanatory power is still a subject of debate within the scientific community. Quantum suicide and quantum immortality are theoretical concepts that delve into the interpretation of quantum mechanics and its potential implications for the nature of reality and subjective experience. Quantum suicide is a thought experiment that explores the concept of many worlds interpretation in quantum mechanics. In this scenario, an experimenter sets up a device that is triggered by a random quantum event such as the decay of a radioactive atom. If the event occurs, the device will instantly and unavoidably kill the experimenter. However, according to the many worlds interpretation, each possible outcome of the quantum event leads to the creation of a parallel universe. Therefore, from the perspective of the experimenter, they will only experience the outcomes where they survive because their consciousness continues to exist in the universes where the random event does not cause their death. Quantum immortality is an extension of this concept, suggesting that a conscious observer will only experience realities in which they remain alive due to the many worlds interpretation. It posits that if there is any possibility for an individual survival in a given situation, they will continue to exist in a universe where they do not experience their own death, regardless of the improbability of such events occurring. While these theories prompt intriguing discussions within the framework of quantum theory, they remain theoretical and controversial topics within the field of physics and philosophy. Simulation theory proposes the idea that reality as we perceive it might actually be a simulated or artificial construct, akin to a computer simulation. This concept posits that an advanced civilization, possibly far more technologically developed than our own, has created a simulation that accurately replicates the universe, including the laws of physics, matter, and consciousness. Advocates of simulation theory argue that as technology continues to advance, creating highly realistic simulations might be achievable in the future. They suggest that if such simulations became indistinguishable from reality to the simulated beings within them, then it becomes statistically probable that we are living in a simulated reality rather than the base physical reality. Supporters often draw parallels between the concept of simulations in computer science and the way our reality seems to operate. They note that the laws of physics appear to have underlying computational aspects and that the progress of technology mirrors advancements in creating more realistic simulations. However, simulation theory remains a speculative concept without direct empirical evidence supporting it. Skeptics question the possibility of creating such an intricate simulation and raise philosophical concerns about the nature of reality, consciousness, and the ethical implications of being part of a simulation. The orthogonality thesis is a concept within the field of artificial intelligence that explores the relationship between intelligence and goals. Proposed by Nick Bostrom, a philosopher and futurist, the organality theory suggests that the level of intelligence exhibited by an AI system is independent or orthogonal to the system's goals or values. According to this thesis, there is no inherent link between the level of intelligence an AI possesses and the intentions or objectives it pursues. In other words, an AI system could theoretically possess any level of intelligence while simultaneously pursuing virtually any goal or value system, regardless of its intelligence level. This idea challenges the notion that higher intelligence necessarily leads to more aligned or benevolent goals in an AI system. It implies that an AI could have high intelligence yet follow goals that are indifferent, harmful, or misaligned with human values, ethics, or well-being. The orthogonality thesis raises questions about the potential outcomes of highly advanced AI systems and emphasizes the importance of aligning AI goals with human values and safety measures to mitigate potential risks. So that's the end of the video, I hope you all enjoyed. Consider leaving a like or subscribing if this video bring you any value and you liked it. And thank you for watching. Bye.